here, and today I am presenting another episode of the Star Wars Podcast, and from the picture on your screen, this episode is another book review on Spectre of the Past by Timothy Zahn. By the way, there should only be one more Timothy Zahn book after this I'll be doing for a while, others will then be non-Timothy Zahn books. For all those... For anyone who might be wondering why I've only done done those. Okay. Now let's get to it. This book was written by Timothy Zahn. And released in November 1997. For anyone who wants to read it now. This is a Legends book. So it's not canon. Due to the fact of when it came out. So. But still a really good read. The events of this book. Occur in 19 ABY, which is approximately 15 years after Endor and 10 years after Thrawn's last vein for power. For those of you who don't know, this trilogy is called The Hand of Thrawn. This isn't a trilogy. This duology is called The Hand of Thrawn duology. So it's consisting of two books. This is the first one in that series, Spectre of the Past, which... After it is Vision of the Future, which I just started. And for anyone who might be wondering. And this revisits the whole idea of Thrawn and his influence on the galaxy after his bid for power 10 years ago. Which was the books on that were the Thrawn trilogy. And it's basically basically goes to show how much. People were actually scared by Thrawn. And the idea of Thrawn starts reappearing. I'll get into that a little bit later. Um, but much of the story to me is more of political occurrences. It's not necessarily fighting. There's a few scenes that are fighting. But it's more just this happens here and this happens there. It's not necessarily fighting. There's one, there's a couple scenes, but most of the book is political occurrences. Now, this isn't a boring book because of that. As anyone who might think this is Star Wars, this isn't political wars. This is a really good book because, um,. Well, it's hard to explain. He goes into the kind of intergalactic fighting, and it's all kind of thought there, and there's, like, this impending threat that the New Republic could actually come down, all because of something that happened years earlier, which I'm going to be getting to that occurrence a little bit later, too. Sorry, I forgot to mention at the beginning of this video. This video is going to have spoilers. So. That's basically what is happening during the story. Is there's a lot of political things going that are going to be politically changing people's thoughts. The um. Next thing is. I recognized a trend that I recognized in the um. Thrawn trilogy in each of those books, I recognize that Timothy Zahn, just like in Star Wars movies as well, it built up to a final battle. Now, this battle wasn't as spectacular as the other ones, but still important. And the final battle was between Paleon and the Kavulu pirates. That was set up from... Moth Disra and Major Tears and Flem in order to get him not to want peace. The problem is he finds out it's not actually General Bell Iblis that is conducting the attack because he knows his attack style. So that prevents a problem in their plan there that they're not going to see for a while. But Anyways, 
that is what that is the final battle that's built up to in this book. And I feel like compared to his other books, that this battle wasn't put as much emphasis on. You didn't really he didn't put emphasis on it to where you knew that's where the book would be ending. In the other books you could get the feeling that oh it's gonna be ending after attack on the shipyards, whether it's Bill Bringley or Sluice Vaughn, or it's gonna be ending on the at Dark Force fleet. There's really not much emphasis put onto it. Two things rebellion doesn't has no idea what's going on here. The, I mean not that's what Empire refers to them as. The New Republic has no idea what's going on with Paleon. And so whenever you're referring to Luke or Leia or someone, there's no need to be looking into that because they have no information about it. So I do kind of think that's a little bit flawed. You didn't really see that to be the ending of the story. But he did build up to it nonetheless, like in his other books. It just wasn't as big of a big blamo here we are. But I think the interconnections in this book of the politics and whatnot is much more interesting than compared to his other books where he didn't get in as in depth in what actually was going on with Admiral Akbar or why there would be a problem with the both ends on Wayland and whatnot. So, the first political thing here is the triumvirate. What happens is Moff Disra forms a triumvirate. Each one is needed. There's Moff Disra himself, who is the political part of the triumvirate. Very much needed in case peace trees needed to be made. What not? Then there is Major Tears, who Moff Disra recruits after he, he reveals the other member of the Triumphant. After he finds out he is an Imperial Guardsman, which means he has very. He's good militarily. And then there's the last member of the Triumphant, which is Flim, who is posing as Grand Admiral Thrawn. Grand Admiral Thrawn, who in the Thrawn trilogy nearly threw over the New Republic and was one of the greatest military masterminds. Many Imperials still wish he was alive. The fact that he is posing as them and they have this whole plan filled out, they're going to be getting a lot of support from Imperials and a lot of fear from the New Republic just by doing this and it is seen several times such as when he reveals himself to the Demolins and Lando Calrissian which imposes political basis and scares much of the New Republic if he happens to be alive or the other half dismisses him as the Demolins telling a lie to get what they want. Now, the other thing that, ha another big thing that happens during this is the Kamasa occurrence. Documents are found on something the Imperials did that the Bothans helped out with that gets a lot of people enraged with the Bothans, and the problem is Bothans can't repay the way they should be able to, and the individuals and in attack names are not known. So, this starts giving people excuses for going to battle with each other, and there's a ship force that goes outside of Bothawania from Mon Calamari and whatnot in order to protect it from invaders, because people get very angry and start seeing up. There's riots on planets everywhere wanting justice for them, which I don't put particularly think I think they should just be forgiven and it's not necessarily something new public should be able should have to deal with but they do because of people's opinions uh but that's 
a Star Wars political position. Silly enough, it's not an actual one. Um, so, this is what most of the story is wrapped around, is this Kamasa current, or Kamasi current, because um, it throws much disarray in the Republic, giving the Imperials a bit of advantage. So this whole occurrence is what really starts this up. And the documents were found on the planet Wayland, as was hinted to in the Thrawn trilogy, as was another document labeled the Hand of Thrawn, which hasn't been revealed yet as to what it actually is. Another political thing that happens that really not much is done with yet because the new public has no idea about it other than transmission they can barely read is Admiral Paleon's peace officer, which many Imperials do happen to reluctantly agree with in the end. This shows the Imperials are very much still hating the New Republic, but that they realize a living empire is better than a dead one. So I think this idea that the peace officer is going offers going to run much into the problem of now we got Grand Admiral Thrawn back, who's not actually Grand Admiral Thrawn. Which way are you going to go? Grand Admiral Thrawn could very well reboot your empire, or could very well kill it since it's not an actual Grand Admiral Thrawn. So, those are the big ideas in this story. But, I really enjoyed the story in the way Timothy Zong creates it to be exciting and makes you want to read the next chapter, even though the next chapter isn't necessarily going to be fighting, as you would suspect in a normal Star Wars type of thing. It's going to be political, but it's still an interesting political some of the political stuff involves fighting, like the riot on the both in homeworld. But it's, in the end, a very good book, and Timothy Zong constructed it very well for Star Wars. And I hope I am not ever to be disappointed by one of Timothy Zong's Star Wars books, though there's only two of them left. <laughs> I don't think I will. So, this is Minecraft Indiana, signing out. See you guys later.